Hello game makers, this is Game Maker Rob and in today's episode we deal with music, sound, an end screen for credits, uh, winning, losing the game, as well as removing the mouse from the game entirely. Okay, so the first thing we are going to do is a bug fix for saving and loading. Uh, the problem was is that whenever we started a new game, we were saving uh, data to a file before we had loaded the room um, with the player, that kind of stuff. So what was happening is if you started a new game and then closed it down as soon as you know, as soon as you'd finished the first uh, story point then you try to reload that same game uh it would cause some issues basically because we had saved the values before they had been set properly so uh we're just gonna sort that out now also uh we really want to be saving the player's sprite rather than the facing so uh we're going to do that as part of the bug fix um in states uh under e values to track we want to swap player facing with player sprite that's the first thing and then in the main states region uh, we have new game that's a new uh, it's a new enum um, so we're either gonna switch from title screen to display save files and then either new game or load game uh, what happens to both of them is going to be similar uh, and then we have we might as well add credits now as well this is going to be for later on though. Uh, so just make sure you have these down for now. We'll cover the rest of the changes for the new features later on. Um, then we want to go into the step event of OBJ main. And in this region here where we're choosing, deleting, starting or loading a save file. And down here in the, the new game bit, um, this is the old code we used to use. Uh, we're just going to actually set the main state to new game and then switch to the world map just like we do in load game. And then in the end step, so uh, basically we want to have this region here. If it's a new game, then we want to uh, store the sprite index of the player. Uh, as well as the X and Y, the player, and that's when we're going to save the game. So then we should have a proper save file. Uh, and one last thing to update is uh, SCR load saved game. Uh, at the bottom here, we just want to set the player sprite as uh, the variable now stored in the player sprite enum. Uh, this was the code before. Um, I also changed it all from obj player dot to just with player because it just saves you having to type obj player dot basically. Um, if we now run the game, we should be able to test that we don't no longer have a crash. So we'll start a brand new game. And the game should have saved, so if we close it down, and then run the game again. So it's saved just before this started. And there we are. So it's all good. No crashes. Cool. There's one other bug that I noticed uh, where it's basically in the battle, the enemy units are still gaining experience. Uh, and when I changed it to stop them and supposedly allow the play units to get experience, um, it was the wrong variable. I was using so let's just go and fix that now it's in the obj animation step event uh let's just minimize some things okay so uh let's scroll across so we're on line 203 uh the added or adds animation to show xp levels gained region this one here it's a bit of a long line uh zoom out a little bit okay so basically before we had uh the line saying if uh ob chest obj test current actor is ai controlled which 
it should be uh, in player's team because the player team could have units that are AI controlled. Um, so we have to change this to if the current actor is in player's team and the current actor is alive, then okay, yeah, do this stuff. So that's the change to fix that bug. Uh, one more thing I should really point out. Um, when we update the end step of OBJ main, uh, we're replacing this line here, line five with line six, basically checking to see if the room is world map uh, and the main state is not equal to game ready, then we're gonna run this stuff here. Okay, so now we are gonna add some new features. If we uh, add three new music files uh, in sound here, we're gonna add uh, music for title and drama which sounds like this. Uh, one for the overworld. And one for battle. And uh, we're gonna actually make a new object as well. But first of all, if we go to the create event of OBJ main and uh, in main states, uh, these two lines here, we're just going to create an instance of OBJ Music Manager, which is the new object uh, if one doesn't already exist. So make a new object, call it that, and make sure that you have it set to persistent, like this here. And then in the create event, the way we're going to handle this is uh, the music object is going to have its own states. And it's going to base those states based on what's happening in the game. Uh, there are there were a, there was a different way we could have done it. We could have uh, changed the song in different places in the game instead. But uh, I like to kind of handle this stuff all in one place, so that's why we're doing it here. It makes uh, adding and bug fixing a lot easier. So uh, for that, we've got our state system. Like I said, uh, off will have no music played. Um, we're going to store the names of the soundtracks within an array uh, and then we're going to initialize our state as off. Uh, current music is going to uh, hold the uh, resource that is currently playing. So at the moment, uh, because the state is off, it, current music is not going to be playing anything. <clears throat> If we go into the end step, because we want everything else to happen before we update the music manager, uh, we have two regions. We've got update state and change music. So in update state, all we're doing is we're checking uh, different parts of the game to see if we should be playing a different song. So for example, if the main state is title screen, then we're going to set the music state to title drama, um, and that's going to let us play the title song. If however the main state is game ready then we want to play the overworld song. Um, all we're doing here is setting the state of the music object. We're actually going to play the song here. Um, if there is an instance of player and the player state is talking then we want to have some dramatic music. Uh, if test exists and test state is in battle then we're going to have battle music. Uh, you'll notice this, that there is no else statements, so um, all of these lines are overwriting the lines that come before them. Uh, it works fine for what, what we need. Uh, and then actually here, change music. So this is where we're going to check to see what song is playing. Um, and then we're going to compare it to the song that should actually be playing, which is going to be wanted music. And if the current song does not match the wanted song, then we're going to have to stop the current song from playing uh, if there actually is a song playing. Uh, if there isn't, then this will equal minus one. If uh, the song we want to play is not nothing, then play that song and then just save or, or just update current music with wanted music so we know which uh, song is actually playing. And that's it. So uh, it works pretty well. If we run the game, uh, let's just test all the different music states. So 
we've got some title screen music right now and we still want that same music because it's a dramatic scene now we have the overworld music we're going to go into a battle we have the dramatic music again and after the conversation finishes we have the battle music there we go if i just uh cheat and kill everyone we get switched back to the overall music uh, and that's it uh, that's how it's going to work that's all we need to do we have uh, music in the game now okay so now we've done so uh, music we can do sound so uh, we're going to add a couple of sounds uh, you may have heard the select sound when we're pressing uh, up down left or right for for choosing something swing is for when you're swinging anything that or when you're making an action like an attack there isn't a spell we're going to use swing <clears throat> hurt is going to be used for when someone actually takes damage spell for casting a spell and died when someone dies and all we need to do is if we update a couple of scripts uh the animation scripts uh, that should take care of the sound effects for this uh so going to scripts and then uh game scripts battle scripts animation and then actor dies pretty straightforward at the very bottom line 40 audio play sound sn died that's the first one and if we go to scr animate actor we're going to play a uh, swing spell or hurt here we have a new region uh, basically we're setting a variable called sound to minus one um, if uh, the current state to switch this actor to is either attack spell or hurt then we're going to set sound to one of these sound files um, none of these may be true if none of them if none of them are true then snd will still be minus one but if one of these is true then we're going to play that sound that's stored inside there so uh one last thing to update is the uh, change option script So uh, in game scripts, SCR change option. Again, just like uh, SCR dies at the very bottom, we just wanna play our select sound effect and, and that should be it for the sounds. Okay, so now we are gonna make a small change in the animation object again. Uh, this is just to make sure that when we die, if we lose a battle, we go back to the title screen. Previously, we just had the game ending. So let's... Uh, Type in Control Shift F, uh, Game End, Find All, and then for me it's line 50. So we're going to we're going to comment out this line for Game End, and then we're just going to uh, set our main state to title screen, and make sure we go back to the first room. Uh, that's actually all we need to do for for that. Let me just zoom in. There we go. So uh, basically, if we're defeated, change the main state to title screen, go to the first room. So now if we go into the create event of OBJ main, we're going to do our kind of final feature, which is setting up credits. So if in the main states, oh no, I'm sorry, not, not there. Um, we've got a brand new region called credits uh, you can see you've got a, an array which is mainly just copy and paste uh, all I'm doing really is spacing out the text how I like it um, and I'm making all this move upwards uh, one pixel at a time and then uh, when all of uh, this text has gone above the, the screen so less than zero uh, then I'm just changing the state back to title screen so uh yeah i'm sorry so in main states uh this is where we're going to be using our new state credits just going to zoom in and uh you can have whatever you want here you know 
just something to uh, to test things out. Um, I want to display the text in the middle, but starting from the bottom. So that's what credit X, credit X and credit Y is for. Uh, credit X is going to stay the same regardless. Credit Y is going to uh, decrease over time. If we go into the uh, step event of our main object, you can see uh, at the bottom we have a new state or a new region, sorry, called credits. So if the state is credits, then like I said, we're going to produce the Y by one every step. And then, uh, like I said, if uh, credit Y is less than zero, take away the, the length of the array times 40, which 40 is what I'm using to space between the lines. So all that long array you saw, however many entries there are times 40, if credit Y is zero minus this much, then uh, what's happened is the whole array has uh, gone off screen, basically. So then I just want to save the game. Uh, you may or may not want to do this. Uh, you may just want the player to be able to replay last battle. For me, I'm just going to save it um, and then go to the title screen. We're in the first room as well, just in case we're not. That'll work better probably. Okay, cool. Don't think there's anything in the end step for this. No. So for the credits uh, in the draw GUI, Here we've got another region stuff. So again, if the main state is credits, we're going to iterate through our whole array, um, getting whatever text is stored inside it. Uh, it could be uh, pro coding artwork, someone's name, or just a blank space. Uh, we're going to draw it in, in white from the middle center of our coordinates. We're going to use a large font um, and then we're going to set draw y as credit y plus whatever i times 40 is. And this will give each entry its own place to draw. Uh, and then we're just going to draw the text like that. So um, I'm trying to think of a fast way to test this. What we'll do is if we go into the OBJ main create event and we're going to have line four five three we're going to set main state to credits so as soon as we, we run the game we should see uh, the credit screen happening and there we go so now we have some scrolling credits Uh, what, we, what we want to happen is, or, or what I want to happen is, when we win the, the last battle, I want to then display the credits after the uh, the victory screen has, has finished uh, in, in the battle. So where we're going to do that is again inside OBJ animation in the step event. I'm just going to do a quick search for credits. Find... I'm sorry, it should be Shift F, Control F even. Okay, here we go. So let me just zoom out. It's so just above where we updated defeat. Um, inside our victory region, underneath where we run our reward script, what we're, what we're going to do, we're going to check to see if the story state is greater than or equal to last. Um, if you remember, whenever we start uh, OBJ test to either do a conversation or, or a battle, the story state gets increased. So after, when the last battle starts, story state is going to get set to eStory.last. And as long as we win, then this is going to be true. So once we've won the last battle, change main state to credits and go to the first room. So let me just... Uh, show you this working let's comment this back out again let's run the game i'm just going to cheat my way through
So now we should see our credits. There we go. Might want to have uh, different music for the credit screen, but uh, I'm happy with this right now. And then uh, I'm just going to wait until the credits finish and it should take us back to the title screen. And there we go. Back to the title screen. Uh, one last thing we're going to do uh, is uh, we have completely elim eliminated the mouse from the game apart from moving around the world map. So I think that's the last thing I'm going to do. And uh, we will call it a day for the entire series. Wow. Uh, it's been a long time since we started. But uh, yeah, so let's go on with this last feature. Okay, so now we're going to remove the mouse from the game completely. We're going to navigate the map using cursor keys um, before we go into the creative end of the player uh, which the player object is where all the changes are I just want to show you just to refresh your memory so what we're going to do is we're going to be pressing uh, left or right and it's going to change to these uh, different um, path points depending on which key we press um, how do we know which one to move to. Well, if you remember, um, we have a list inside each path point, this one here, and uh, we just assign numbers to the list to say, okay, well, uh, this guy has a path point of zero, this guy has a path point of two, we're gonna add these two to the list. And then uh, we um, have another variable called connects ID, which is gonna store the instance ID of each uh, path point they get stored in an array and so say for example uh, we're looking at uh, the uh, second entry of the array uh, which is number one then that entry in the array is going to store the instance ID of this particular path point and that's how we're going to know which one to move to um, so uh, we're going to use a variable called selected option which is going to navigate through the different entries in connects to uh, you'll see that now so let's go into the creative end of the object so we've got two new variables selected option which is what i've just been talking about and target path point is going to hold the id of the path point that we're trying to move to uh, this is going to replace the other variable called the, the mouse over point uh, which uh, the if we left it as a mouse over, it's not going to really describe what it does because we don't use the mouse anymore. So uh, just make sure you've got these two new variables. If we go into the step event of the player now, uh, we are just updating these two regions. So uh, there's not too much work, don't worry. Um, so in the init region, uh, we're replacing mouse over path with target path point. Like I said, that's the only change in this region and then in idle this is where the vast majority of the work's, work is going to go um, this let me just zoom out so this is our old code and we're actually going to be reusing most of it uh, so this stuff we're going to copy and paste it um, we're going to copy and paste it I'll show you that in a minute uh, it's just these lines that we don't use because we're not, we're not using the mouse so here we have our new region so we're going to check if we press left then change selected option um, the values of selected option is going to be between zero and the size of our connect to list stored in the current path point so if there's two path points that we can travel to then it's going to be between zero and one same thing for vk right um, if we press left or right, then we want to set connecting path point as whatever is stored inside our list. So again, this is going to be a number like 0, 1, 2, 3. And then uh, path array holds the IDs of all of our path points. Um, so whichever ID is stored in this entry 
is going to be stored in target path point. So target path point holds the ID where we want to travel to. And then um, just to uh, make the path points uh, draw the correct image, we're just going to set all their images to the first one. And then our target path point, we're going to set their image index to one. So it looks like it's being selected. That's all that this is about. Then if we press space, uh, this is the code from before. So we're just going to move towards our target path point, set our state to walking and uh, get the correct direction for the player. And that should be it. Let, let me just up, see if there's any changes in the... Uh, no, that's it. Cool. So um, it's been a, a long journey for me. Um, two attempts really to, to get it right. Uh, thank you very much to everyone who has made this possible. Um, I'll be eternally grateful. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys can make some good games using this information. So uh, bye for now.